Hi everyone! In today's video, I will be demonstrating how to paint this absolutely easy and quick watercolor tree. For supplies, you will need the following. A pencil for a quick sketch. I'll be using this rainbow pencil as per usual. You can get it from Amazon. A light colored wax crayon for the resist effect. I'm still using my Stettler one from a local store, but feel free to use any other product you have on hand that can create the same effect. Of course, watercolor. I'll be using my Roman Schmal palette, all from Jackson's. And watercolor paper and a large juicy brush. For this demo, I'll be using Amatruda's 100% cotton paper pad and Borciani Bonazzi's Unico Infinito quill brush. Both are Italian-made products that you can find on Momart. Links to everything are in the description box below. The paper and brush are new to me, so I will let you know my thoughts about them at the end of the video. Alright, let's begin by drawing a rough sketch of our tree. For those who need a little help, feel free to screenshot and trace my digital sketch here. I like to start with a line for the ground to anchor our tree. And then we have a curvy tree trunk and its extending branches, followed by wavy lines all around for the tree's silhouette. Now don't get too caught up about sketching the perfect curves and branches because we can adjust them all when we paint over it later. Then, using your wax crayon for a resist effect, draw on some branches here and there, as well as some lines on your tree trunk. You can be as messy or loose as you like, because like I said, we'll paint over it anyway. For the first layer of paint, we're going to keep this very loose and not care too much about perfect placement. Using your large brush, get some green-yellow and paint the entirety of the tree's bush. You can do this all in one go, one brush stroke, or what I did here is added some variation to the green-yellow here and there. Then add about three to four brush tip taps around the tree to create some leafy effect. And while the paper is still wet, grab some middle green color, like a hooker's green or sap green, load up your brush and dab it randomly onto the tree. The colors will fade into each other, so you don't need to worry about blending at all. Hopefully you can already see how the wax crayon has kept the white of the paper. And then, with whatever green you have left on your brush, do a few quick strokes for the ground, pressing down at first and lifting your brush as you come away from the paper. This will give a nice dry brush effect, adding to the loose nature of this piece. I chose to add a couple more brush strokes of yellow to add some variation to the ground so that it's not completely a flat green color. Now don't wash your brush just yet! Dip the tip of your brush halfway into your water cup and now just give your brush a few taps around your tree to create some water splashes. After this step, Leave it to dry for a little bit. You can use a heat gun or a hair dryer to speed up the process if you'd like. Then grab your favorite middle brown color. Burnt sienna works well, burnt umber as well, any color you like. I personally couldn't choose, so <laughs> does anyone do this too? Anyway, once you have your brown, paint on the tree trunk and branches. I'm painting on a solid brown color, but you can see that the crayon that we laid down in the beginning automatically gives us some texture to the tree. With a darker brown, add some shadows to the tree trunk and branches. If you don't know how to identify shadows, don't worry. I don't want you to think about that right now. Trees are very forgiving because sometimes the shadow can be under a branch or leaves may be creating shadows on the top side of the branch, so just aim to create some contrast with this dark brown at this step. Moving on, get a natural yellow-green color, like a sap green maybe, and randomly make large short brush strokes. We're adding some depth to the tree here. And then with an even darker green, Make some small little dabs here and there for those super dark shadows to create even more contrast. 
The ground was looking a bit barren, so I did some short spiky strokes with the tip of my brush using a green-yellow to create a grass effect. And that's all there is to it! I hope that's not too hard. If you try this out, do tag me on Instagram so I can see your creations as well. As promised, a little review on the brush and paper. As with all products, there are definitely good and bad points depending on your preference. So, this Amatruda paper product came in a protective plastic sleeve. I always keep these sleeves to store other loose scrap paper. Here is the back. Feel free to pause and have a read for yourself. I'm not sure if many know this brand, so here are their info. Here comes the highlight. They have uncut natural edges, similar to edges you can find from Cotty Paper products. It's A4 size, has 15 sheets, made in Italy. Of course, 100% cotton paper, the best you can get to use with watercolor. And it's 340 GSM, which is a little more than the standard 300, but I can't feel an obvious difference. The texture is between cold press and smooth. And they say the color is ivory, which is like an off-white. And that's rather normal for 100% cotton watercolor papers. It has an elastic band securing the sheets. I first thought this was a paper pad because all the packaging sort of points to it being a pad where one edge is glued. However, it's not. They're just loose watercolor paper sheets. All four edges are natural edges, so it looks very organic. That's one point that I love about it. Although there are no edges glued down, the elastic band really did its job holding down the paper as I painted. I honestly did not have an issue with buckling. I even forgot about it completely because there wasn't any obvious issues of the edges curling up while painting. But I did check after painting that there was some buckling, just like any other paper. But it was so minor that it didn't make a difference to me. As for the Unico brush, I don't have anything exactly the same in size, but right when I held it in my hands, I knew immediately it was much, much heavier than any other mop brushes I have tried. It weighs twice as much as my Rosemary mop brush that's of a similar size. That's significantly heavier for me. Initially, I wasn't in favor of that, but after actually painting with it, I can definitely see why some people may prefer a heavier brush like this. It feels like you're holding something substantial. The crisscross textured pattern isn't just for aesthetics. It actually helps with gripping the brush because, I mean, the brush is heavy, so this textured pattern really helps. I was convinced it had to be real squirrel hair. It was only later that I found out it's synthetic squirrel hair. I'm rather amazed at how similar to real squirrel hair this is. There is also a flat surface on this part of the handle, which I absolutely appreciate because that way my brush doesn't roll around. The only drawbacks of these two products that I could think of is the paper. They're just loose sheets of paper stacked together. It's possible that they may fall off, but if you're just in the studio, it should be fine. And the brush, it's a great brush just maybe a little bit too heavy for me. If you have arthritis or wrist joint issues, this may not be the best path you want to take. Well, that's it for today. Let me know if you'd like more painting demo tutorials like this because I'm definitely in a tree phase right now. As always, thank you so much for watching everyone. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.